Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. 49 faces looked to him in triumph. Over the last 12 months, they had each taken turns and promoted his business for a week at a time, driving over $987,342 in revenue. What if you had a network of 50 centers of influence who promoted your business every week for a year? Grab your copy of the number one Amazon best-selling book, The Ultimate Guide to Growing Your Business with a Podcast, at 33% off the Amazon price by going to ultimatepodcastbook.com. Again, that website for 33% off the Amazon price is ultimatepodcastbook.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be interviewing Colby Goodman, a seasoned hiring coach and keynote speaker known for empowering individuals and organizations to make better hiring decisions. Colby, thanks so much for joining us. Seth was having me on. Our pleasure. So let's go back in time just a little bit. How did you, you didn't wake up one, you weren't born a no. uh, a talent acquisition expert. How did you get started? So actually my journey starts on the other side of the table. Um, after a, a decade of corporate IT management, decided that I wasn't really in love with it anymore. Um, and I decided to help others figure out what they wanted to do when they grew up, no matter how old they were. Spent about a decade doing that, helping over 4,000 people, giving over 200 keynotes, being very lucky and having the impact that I have of helping people find jobs that paid them more, that allowed them to do the work they really wanted to, and try to uh, acquire that elusive work-life balance. Um, and in doing that, found that a lot of, as my clients were empowering themselves to go find new work, two things were happening. One is they were getting driven away by their current employer because they didn't want to be there anymore. The work was monotonous. The bosses were, you know, rude and idiots and un- disrespectful. And they were getting driven away from what we thought were really good employers because they weren't being treated well in the interview and application process. And so I said, all right, like, obviously I have a biased, positive view of my clients who are go-getters, rock stars. Um, they are willing to invest in themselves to be better. What employer, what business owner worth their salt wouldn't want somebody like that on their team. And so I realized, okay, a lot of these managers, decision makers, leaders were making these mistakes subconsciously, unconsciously a lot of the times. And so transition into working with these leaders to help them develop a more positive and engaging candidate experience and to ultimately stop hiring simple employees who are qualified into hiring experts who can solve their problems for them. That's a mindset shift, right? I love that idea as a employer myself. <laughs> um, I love the idea of thinking of not trying to just fill a role, fill a seat, but looking for someone to solve a problem. What? Who's an ideal client for you? Uh, you know, a small to medium business who has found themselves with a, a permanent migraine of um, high turnover, you know, of long recruiting cycles, of poor performers, and of maybe despite themselves are developing an attitude of nobody wants to work anymore. Um, and I think that is something we can I can help my clients get out of um, and really uh, evaluate what they want this person to do. Okay, evolve it from being a body into a problem solver and take them through everything from developing an engaging and attractive job posting, pre-screening, you know, and, and saying no to the no's and saying hell yes to the yeses, um, and then coaching everybody involved in the interview and offer process, how to cultivate a relationship with this rock star so that they will eagerly sign the dotted line and start ASAP. Well, that sounds fantastic. How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> it ultimately starts with us working together to figure out what do you need this person to solve, right? We, If you go on to Indeed, LinkedIn, Glassdoor, 99% of the job postings are going to talk about 
previous experience and responsibilities. And do you really want to bring in a robot? Do you want somebody simply just going to do the job? Probably not. Right? Robots are cheaper. They're more reliable. They don't call in sick, right? They don't have personality disorders. And so helping these leaders understand how can this person, what do they need to bring to make their life easier, right? If you go in and to post a job and all you're asking yourself is, well, I need somebody to do the job. They're going to end up being a larger liability than an asset for you. So helping them understand what is the ideal candidate look like? What should they be saying? How should they be thinking so that they stand out as an expert problem solver? How do you help us attract and vet the right candidates? Because I feel like as an employer, first of all, the percentage of resumes out there that are just got awful blows my mind. Like mm -hmm. I'm sitting here going, when I was looking for a job, you know, in high school, in college, 20 plus years ago, I ne my parents never would have let me send something like this out. <laughs> what is wrong with people? Like, do you have any insight into that? Like, what is wrong with people? I, I think it's, it, it, there's some responsibility to be had on both sides, right? I think a lot, a lot of individuals in this day and age looking for work are treating this process as they did during the boom, right? I, I check enough of the boxes. I'm a warm body. I'm proactive enough to apply. Somebody will want me, right? And so there's this shotgun approach. But the problem is, is that the, the noise is so much more voluminous, right? The number of applicants is so much. And so it's hard to stick out. But now as businesses are starting to be more strategic, they, unfortunately, they're marketing needing people who check a box. But what they really need is somebody to solve a problem, somebody to move the business needle in the right direction to experience a positive ROI. And so two things I would say there was one is, you know, if you have anybody listening out there that is looking for support in marketing themselves better, go find an expert, right? Like we don't tend to market ourselves really well, which is why we need to go to outside support. Secondly, is if you are a, an, a business owner, a manager, a, a leader who is getting inundated and drinking from a fire hose of subpar and embarrassing resumes, your messaging to the, the market is off. Because what you're doing, you're saying, hey, if you qualify, if you check enough of these boxes, you should let us know. And if you're casting too wide of a net, if you're setting the bar too low, you're going to get inundated with too many applications. And what I've seen time and time against that is that those leaders that do that tend to just settle for the next one instead of being strategic about picking the right one. Okay. So that's really interesting. So I love that we're having this discussion because this is a challenge for us. <laughs> uh, so I'm a potential client and I think that I did a really darn good job on the copywriting of our, let's say, ad job description on Indeed. Like it specifically is trying to repel the wrong people. It is specifically talking about, for example, how hard it is to actually get a job here. Like how, what the exact responsibilities are, what a day in the life looks like. Like if you don't eat, sleep and breathe this business, then don't, <laughs> you know, I would, you know, I would think that that would attract a players who are like, I want to rise to the challenge. I want to prove that mm -hmm. I could get in there. I would hope that, you know, even though it says like, send a cover letter, send examples of these books that you've read about these topics. Like, and then 80% of the people don't even follow directions or people send resumes where each job has like one set less than a sentence. And I'm like, I have literally printed some out, taken them home and shown my teenage kids. Don't ever send anything like this. <laughs> this is an example of what not to do. Now let's pretend I got past that first hurdle. Let's pretend I actually attracted some of the right people. Mm. We have a decent percentage of people who don't even show up for interviews. We have a percentage of people then then if we get through that, I'm like, why did you bother to literally go back and forth, schedule a date and time, and then never show? Which drives me crazy. I'm like, you want the job. Don't you have to show up to at least try and get it? So <clears throat> in clients that experience ghosting on the clients or on the candidate side, excuse me, I, I act as a buffer, right? P clients bring me in to be a, a third party expert in the process and to act as a buffer in between themselves and the candidates. So I can go out and say, Hey, candidate X, you know, I see, you know, I got a report back from Seth. You didn't show up today. Like, can you just explain to me what happened? Technical difficulties. Are you sick? Flat tire, you know, um, or did you lose interest in the role? And, and tell me why. Like, because I think the frustrations that you're having are completely and, and absolutely understand and sustain, right? 
But I think the animosity on both sides of the coin, right? The employer and the employee has gotten so high that we are no longer communicating and connecting and engaging together to under, to, to get to the root of the problem. And so, so for am, that- so what, am I, what am I missing? Mm -hmm. Because I'm, there's no animosity. I am trying to give these people money. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I showed up for every job interview I ever went on. I was like 20 minutes early. I'm like, you you mess you picked a day and a time you scheduled it and then you didn't show up and then you didn't respond like hey where are you don't respond and like there's I can think of one example of versus like oh I got another job and I'm like that's fine congratulations why didn't you tell us so we weren't sitting here waiting for you sure and then there's just the people who just totally disappear and I'm like okay if you decided you changed your mind shouldn't you have some common courtesy and some manners and say hey I'm no longer interested in this. I think that's all understood. And I think you're absolutely right so to have that frustration. I think the unfortunate thing is those candidates have been on the other side of it so often that there's been this complete lack of respect on, on either side. Like as much, as much as you've been ghosted by a candidate, that same candidate has probably been ghosted two to three times more in the past. And not, I'm not saying it's right or correct or respectful. I'm just saying. Because if you reverse the, if you, say the same analogy. So I'm being ghosted. They're not showing up for interviews. They're not telling us. So are you telling me they showed up for the interview and no one was there to interview them? No, what I'm saying, uh, potential, I've definitely had clients in the past who have showed up for interviews with the other people doesn't log on where they've interviewed, spent time and energy in an effort to get prepared and have a conversation only to be never, to never be called back from that, from that, from that company ever again. There's no closing of the loop. And so what I'm saying is we we need to be better on both sides of the aisle here to to close the communication gap. And so, uh, again, I think your frustration is absolutely warranted and I can hear it in your voice. And I know it's frustrating because you need somebody in that role yesterday to do a good job and help everybody on the team. You need to do your job that is a little bit interviewing, but you got work to do. You got business to run. You got people to lead. And so it's this like triple time suck. Right. So it's about, you know, I would want to work with you to kind of in, in investigate more of, okay, what is your ghost rate? Can we reach out and get some feedback? Is there a commonality here? Are there ways that we can uh, in, interject some barriers to entry about having the conversation to show that this person is serious without making that mountain too large that they're going to toss you aside and go to the next guy? Right. So there's a lot of strategy there. And again, I think what you're feeling and experiencing is understandable. And I think is all too often, all too common, excuse me, but it's about looking at the patterns and trying to break them so that we can help you find those diamonds in the rough. Awesome. So let's pretend that we did all that right. We attracted okay. a person, they scheduled an interview that actually showed up. How do we tell the difference? Because a lot of people, we've had people interview fantastic do a great job selling themselves, but don't always do a great job doing the actual job. And there are times that I ask myself the question, what happened to the awesome person we interviewed? Where'd they go? So a couple things there. Um, when I have a client who, com who comes to me who has repeated disappointments in new hires, I say, okay, what is your onboarding strategy, right? Are you... You know, some people say, well, I trained them for a couple of days and I let them go. It's like, well, you've been doing this for 20 years. I, I think, you know, two eight hour shifts and trying to disseminate knowledge probably isn't working. So that would be the first place, right? Are you in power? You know, are people being empowered to work for you with the right uh, knowledge, with the right support, you know, all that. And then if that is all square, I would go back into the interview process and say, are you presenting enough questions? Are you digging deeper enough to get to understand how this person thinks, right? Because a lot of times interviews, and we've all gotten into it, right? Where, tell me about a time when, yeah. and that story tends to be really plot driven. This happened, this happened, and then this, and then I talked to this person, and then we solved the problem. But there's a complete lack most of the times of what motivation, what inspiration, what expertise did you bring what was happening inside you know between your ears that inspired you to work or do in that way and that's what we're really buying right we're not buying past performance we're buying current expertise and so helping clients dig down deeper into stories really nitpicking get in understand 
tell me how you thought or why did you choose that? Like getting really curious. Because I think a lot of people, talk, they say, tell me about a time when, and they're just hoping that the person acted in a way you want them to act in the future and then check that box versus how does this person think? What motivates them? What inspires them to take action? What questions are they asking themselves or others to get them to a conclusion? And I think that tends to be a lot of where the aha moments for my clients come with is like, oh yeah, like I, you know, they told me all these great stories, but I don't really know. They, they had, a, I call it the algebra test problem. They had a great answer, but they didn't show enough of their work, but you were still big. You were still giving them full credit. I love, I have three kids in school, so I love the school analogy. <laughs> what are some of the biggest mistakes we're making as employers? I, I, it kind of goes back to my, you know, my oeuvre is we're not looking for problem solvers. We're looking for doers. We're looking for cogs in our machines. And I think if we can look at what problems do I need solving? Where am I looking for relief? Where are my biggest pain points? And going out and not finding somebody to do the work, but somebody to solve the problem. Like I said before, like if you look online right now, vast majority of job descriptions are looking for doers. And if we put ourselves in the shoes of our employees, would you be excited about being, again, that cog in the machine every day for the next you know 20 years? Probably not. So how do we get people excited to work for us? And being on you know a candidate side for so long, it was what pro it was helping them understand what problems they want to solve, they're excited to solve, what challenges are they purposefully seeking, and if we can communicate that more effectively, we're going to attract more high quality, excited experts to us who genuinely want to help us versus simply just be you know a paper pusher or an order taker. Amen to all of that. Well, um, with all the success you've achieved for your clients, what's your biggest challenge now? I mean, I think, it. you know, as we talked about before here, is that, you know, people, they look at hiring, they don't look at it long term, right? Because we don't think of hiring, we need somebody in, right? There's no developing of the pipeline. We Too many people are looking at they're not looking at hiring and retention as if they would doing for their clients, right? We all know the old adage, it is cheaper to keep a client than it is to acquire a new one, right? So helping people realize that so they're not scrambling and turning hiring, you know, recruiting, hiring, onboarding, and retention into a tried and true strategy versus trying to fill a backfill a gap in your workforce because somebody unexpectedly put in their two weeks or somebody screwed up so royally, you have no choice but to let them go. And so helping people shift, like you said at the beginning, take a mindset shift of hiring into, this is simply just a band-aid to how do we approach it strategically and surgically so that you can slot some, but you can slot in that next rock star person without having to go through the pain and suffering of, drinking from the fire hose of a bunch of embarrassing resumes. I, I I greatly appreciate that. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? It's about bringing a, a passionate sound um, in expert business owners, leaders, um, decision makers connected with people who want to solve their problems. Right. We get, I, I think, one of the most overused phrases in the English language is, How can I help you? Right. We hear it so many times a day, a week, and it's not really genuine. But imagine on both sides of the equation, you are a leader, a manager who, who comes to the office and somebody comes to you and says, Hey, boss, how can I help you today? That would be such a relief. Right. And imagine wow. being that employee and saying, Hey, my boss, I'm here to help that person. I'm here to leverage my expertise, my experience, my innate gifts to better the lives of other people. And being able to bring those two entities together, people who are good at what they do and want to lead and grow and flourish, who may have some important pain points for growth with expert people who are excited to be challenged at work every day and be part of a community where they're looked at as an expert versus simply just somebody there to do the job. That is awesome for our employers watching and listening, where is the best place for them to go to learn more about all things Colby? Yeah, two places. So bestfirstnow.com is my website. Hire the best, hire them first, hire them now. I'm going to help you do that. 
Also feel free to uh, reach out to me. You can help me on LinkedIn, Colby Goodman, K-O-L-B-Y Goodman. I'm the first and only result. I'm looking forward to connecting uh, with your audience shortly. Awesome. This has been Seth Green here with Colby Goodman. Colby, thanks again for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We'll talk to you or see you next time. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com.